In this video, I will talk about TCP's flow control mechanisms. So, on the receive side, you have your application process of reading data out of the socket. And your application, your receiving application, may be reading data out of the receive buffers slower than TC, the TCP sender is sending data. And so what flow control does is that it controls the receiver, that is, controls the sender, such that the sender won't overwhelm the receiver's buffer by transmitting data too, too uh, much and too fast. And how does TCP do this? Well, the receiver will advertise how much free buffer space is available by including the receive window fee, uh, value in the TCP header of the receiver to sender segments. Typically, the receive buffer size is set via socket options, and the typical default is about 4 kilobytes, 4096 bytes. And many operating systems will be auto-adjusting the receive buffer based on what else is happening at that machine. And so the sender will limit the amount of unacknowledged data to be less than the or equal to the, re the receiver's receive window value. And this will then guarantee that the receiver's buffer will not overflow. So let's say um, you have the receive buffer, that's the total amount of space that the operating system had allocated for the socket on the receive machine. And so let's say then that um, there's so much buffered data, then the receiver will advertise receive window where that is receive buffer minus however much data is buffered. And so TCP will always make sure that that is um, the data that it sends is you know less than or equal to that. If the receiver advertises the receive window size of zero, then the process at the sender is blocked until the receiver advertises a non-zero receive window size. This brings to an end this recording. In the next recording, we'll talk about how TCP manages connections.